Greenhouse gas concentrations in our atmosphere have increased dramatically since the Industrial Revolution. This increase has been the source of concern among scientists and many in the general public. Greenhouse gases play a role in absorbing and trapping heat in the atmosphere, making them an important factor driving global climate. Because of the link between greenhouse gases and climate, a discussion on the increase is generally termed climate change. While climate change has become a politically charged issue and many disagree on the ways to move forward with policy and solutions, it is clear that climate change will continue to receive a great deal of attention. Now let's take a moment for a bit of perspective. Greenhouse gases are not entirely bad. Without them, our planet's average temperature would be around zero degrees Fahrenheit instead of our current average, which is around 57 degrees. However, even seemingly small changes in the concentration of these gases can have impacts on global climate and weather patterns. The main reason that this topic has been elevated to everyday conversation is because of how quickly these levels have risen over the past 150 to 200 years. The predictions put forward by climate scientists continue to be refined and improved, but most indications are that we need to prepare for a hotter and more extreme climate. Materials in this uh, self-study module are not meant to advocate for any particular policy or political agenda. We're focusing on two practical aspects of this topic. One, farmers, ranchers, and ag professionals need to be prepared to evaluate the likelihood of various climate scenarios and make long-term management decisions on farms, ranches, or businesses based on the best information they have available. And two, as policy discussions and development continue, agriculture needs to stay involved and informed in order to advocate for sound policy decisions. There are four points to consider when asking yourself, why should I care? The first two seem obvious. Agriculture is a source of greenhouse gases and emits them to the atmosphere. And as an industry, it also has a great deal of potential to capture or mitigate or sequester the release of these greenhouse gases. The third point is a very practical one. It needs to be part of every risk management plan. How will we evaluate and manage long-term changes in climate? Last but not least is the fact that any future policy conversations are going to include agriculture and we need to stay informed on the science and the policy discussions themselves. If you look at that first point on the previous slide, agriculture is one of the economic sectors that emit greenhouse gases. This graph is taken from the 2012 EPA greenhouse gas inventory, which includes data through the year 2010. It summarizes major U.S. economic sectors and the allocation of all the greenhouse gas emissions to each of those sectors. Agriculture accounts for between 7 and 8 percent of U.S. emissions. If you look at the top line, industry share is about 30 percent. Next is transportation at about 27 percent. The uh, commercial and residential sectors are very close together and account for 17 and 18 percent each respectively. This graph distributes electricity to each sector according to the amount of electricity used by that sector. As an interesting comparison, agriculture on a worldwide basis is estimated to be around 10 to 12 percent of man-made greenhouse gas emissions, and this is according to the 2007 Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Electricity is not factored into that total. And if you remove electricity from agriculture in the EPA graph above, it still retains a fairly similar percent overall, about 7% of U.S. emissions. So when you compare those two, U.S. agriculture greenhouse gas emissions is a smaller percent than worldwide agriculture greenhouse gas emissions. A couple of reasons that are usually given for this is the fact that U.S. agriculture is not actively de deforesting land for crop or feed production. And a second reason given is that U.S. agriculture is highly efficient compared to many other systems worldwide and produces a high amount of product in comparison to the inputs consumed. Even though agriculture is the lowest line on this graph, 
it does not mean that it is insignificant when it comes to emissions. There are several categories where agriculture is the leading source of man-made emissions, and we'll specifically look at methane and nitrous oxide.